in Goal We Trust Report came back came out back in May after much hard work. I think it'd be a good start if you could, you know, identify the meaning behind the main late motif this year, which was the new gold playbook. Uh, what made you settle on this title in the end, and, and what are the main overarching themes encompassed by it? Every year we we we, we try to to come up with a um, with a light motif, with uh, with like one title that really dis, uh, explains what's going on in the gold world. And 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 last year we had um, the light motif of a showdown, which played out uh, pretty well. Uh, and this year we've got the new gold playbook because. We sat together with the whole team uh, at the beginning of the year and said, you know, real interest rates are, are, are rising big time. So nominal rates are rising and inflation numbers are coming down, um, which should be, you know, headwinds for the price of gold. But um, but still, gold is trading uh, 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 close to new all time highs. And then we said, OK, usually we should see some some ETF inflows, but uh, we're still seeing outflows. So the Western financial investor couldn't care less about gold. So something is actually happening in the gold market. Uh, and we said, okay, well, it, it seems that there's really a, a new playbook that we have to, um, um, have to deal with and to work with. So this was, this was basically the, the, the idea of this year's, um, uh, of this year's, uh, report. And we said, okay, so, so it seems that real interest rates, um, uh, in the US are no longer the ultimate factor for, for, for the gold price. We said that um, central banks and especially emerging market central banks are are actually uh, increasingly influencing the gold price. So, you know, the um, let's say the marginal buyer, the marginal gold buyer has moved from the Western world to emerging markets. We said yeah. that um, inflation is actually um, uh, going to be sticky and, and, and we expect much more um, inflation volatility. So, um, yeah, we, we basically described um, the 10 key points of this new gold playbook in this year's report. And I think so far it's, it's playing out uh, pretty well. Quick break here. This episode is brought to you by West Red Lake Gold Mines. Now, if you know nothing about West Red Lake Gold Mines, let me tell you one thing. This company was founded on the back of a transaction where they purchased the Madsen Mine in Northwestern Ontario in an area called the Red Lake Gold District, which to date has produced around 30 million ounces of gold from some of the richest gold deposits in the world. Now, what they paid for this mine versus what they got has led legendary mining entrepreneur Frank Justra to call this transaction the deal of the decade. And Bob Moriarty, founder of 321 Gold, was recently on my show calling West Red Lake Gold Mines one of the two most undervalued gold companies in Canada. If you're curious why these individuals are so excited about West Red Lake Gold Mines, hit the link below to learn more. Now back to the episode. One of the things that you talked about in terms of how to navigate this new playbook was your kind of re-engineered version of the 60-40 portfolio. Um, and in my understanding, this involves an allocation of 45% stocks, 15% bonds, 15% safe haven gold, 10% performance gold, 10% commodities, and 5% Bitcoin. So, of course, this is a, a drastic change from the 40% bonds exposure that traditional investors have been accustomed to over the years. But... I guess to play devil's advocate, why should investors abandon the tradition of bond-dominated portfolios of the past and embrace this new gold playbook? In your view, well, well, the thing is, um, I think you know there's very, very few investors, um, active investors around that actually um, uh, worked in an environment of of, of high inflation, of uh, uh, volatile inflation, like in the 1970s. So um, during this so-called great moderation, where you know, inflation numbers were, were, were coming down, bond prices were, were going up, uh, obviously. Um, basically, for, for four decades, um, I think we all got really used to the fact that inflation isn't uh, a crucial driver for, um, for uh, the construction of a portfolio, actually. While, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm often mentioning that, but because I think it's, 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 it's really, really important. Um, when I delivered uh, two keynotes in in Turkey in Istanbul, um, investors there they they asked really the the most interesting 
thought provoking and the most educated questions because for them obviously inflation has always been a concern and and, and inflation was actually or let's say to to understand inflation and to forecast inflation for them has always been crucial for portfolio construction and from our point of view we, we will be going back to that um, 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 to that environment where inflation plays a much more important role for portfolio um, uh, construction. So, so actually, we came up with this um, 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 a new version of the of the sixty forty portfolio because actually the 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 we had in the nineteen seventies, for example, Harry Brown. He was uh, he was a, a great sound money guy, and 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 he advocated the so kind of so called permanent portfolio. Um, uh, which was 25% equities, 25% bonds, 25% cash, and then 25% gold. Uh, and then we had this, this great moderation that I, that I talked about. Um, and, and, uh, of course, uh, due to, um, 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 back testing and, you know, fitting a portfolio basically to, to prior performance numbers, um, everybody started investing into some sort of a 60 40 portfolio. But from my point of view, this allocation should not be set in stone. So, so, you know, it's, it's 60, our interpretation of the 60 40 portfolio still says, okay, stocks 45% instead of 60%. But I think the major change is that we're seeing only 15% bonds instead of 40%. Yes. Um, and we substitute that for what we call safe haven gold which is physical gold stored in a safe jurisdiction, um, probably outside of the banking system. And this is something where, you know, you don't, uh, uh, you know, look at the, at the price every day. This is really like an insurance. But then we also like so-called performance gold, which could be silver, which could be mining stocks. Um, this is a definitely much more active part of the portfolio. Then we would see 10% commodities, and 5% Bitcoin uh, as our kind of uh, rule of thumb for, for, for portfolio allocation for the next, um, let's say, 10, 15 years, something like that.